Um, so that's what they did. They tossed this. Um, so these women were called fishwives because they were big, burly women, beards, stuff. And they came out to Versailles and were demanding that the king and queen give them their bread. And they're like, we don't have any bread. You know, this is what they wore, by the way, when they went out there. And so the legend is, right, that Marie Antoinette, the queen of France, came out on her balcony. And these people were demanding bread. And she's like, oh, my gosh, let them eat cake if they are so hungry. All right? You heard that story? You watched Peabody and Sherman? Yeah. Yes. Big Peabody and Sherman. Right? Let them eat cake. Um, but she never really said that. Okay? She never said let them eat cake. And when she did, or if she, the reason why this goes with it is, cake at this time didn't mean cake. Okay? Cake at this time actually meant like a chestnut tortilla piece of bread. Like really, really green. Like how many of your parents make you eat like multi-green bread? None of you? Your parents don't love you that much strictly? You don't eat multi-grain bread at home? Yes, you do. You still want to see anything. See, I knew Strickland did. Okay? Um, Tessa, no, you eat multi-grain bread too. They're all liars. Um, but if you ever got the really multi-grain, where it's like, there's like big seeds in it, right? it's like all oh, that's good stuff. So that's what she's having them eat, because that's what the poor people ate back in the day. Which is funny because now it's like, oh, the multi-grain bread is like uber expensive, right? The stuff that the nobility ate, the good bread, is actually what we consider now like bad bread for you. Which would be what? You know, white bread. Huh? White bread. Very white bread. Like, have you ever had Wonder Bread? It's like in the big colorful package. It like, literally the bread like melts in your mouth. Dude, Wonder Bread is like, Trim, have you ever had Wonder Bread? You go to store, go to Harding's. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Siler, it's the best bread, isn't it? It's, pretty good, yeah. it's like you have a Sammy on it, and it's just like, it just, whoo, oh, it's the best. And you will never go back. We made the bad choice. Not bad, but COVID hit, right? And so everyone's bored, and you're at home in March, and there's nothing to do. And so we felt bad for, you know, Aliyah and Braden. So we're like, okay, we'll get one loaf of, like, the Wonder Bread to have, like, sandwiches on since we're home. You know, it's kind of crummy and stuff. And now, they're like, we won't eat any other bread. They're like, it's because it's so lame, I'm telling you. Man, once you've had it. Now, it's completely unhealthy, but it's fake red donkey. It's a good bread. Um, so, they do this new constitution. And what they do is, one, is they confiscate church land. Remember a lot of the, the philosophers we talked about with the Enlightenment were very anti-church. They were deists, right? They didn't care about the church. So these are the guys that are helping to lead the revolution. And so they're like, church, you know, church, okay? So what do they do? They confiscate church land, which remember the church had a ton of land, which means a ton of wealth. And then what they do, and this is like a win-win for most people, if, except the church, is they sold the land then to the peasants for really cheap. So if you're a peasant, you're like, this is great. I got 10 bucks. I can get like 10 acres. I would have never been able to afford that before. France is like, this is cool because the government's out getting money because they're selling this land that they got for free because they stole it from the church. So it's only the church that's kind of like, well, this is crap. They also start doing assignats, which is assignats in French, um, which is paper money as a way to get the economy rolling. All right? So France starts using paper money, and then they control the church, the government does, which is completely new as well too. All right? The church had always looked up to the pope, but now they're like, Pope, you're not in Italy, you're not in charge anymore. The French government will control the French church. All right? So, by 1791, they have everything kind of ironed out. It's not a fast process by any means. And they're like, we're going to have our very first election, okay, to our, our new government. The king, his powers are going to be limited. In other words, he's going to be a constitutional monarchy like England. We're also going to have a unicameral legislature, which means... How many houses are going to be in it? How many? One, because it's uni, right? Like unibrow. We don't even talk about that. So one house. Um, the right to vote will go to men who own property. But it's still, I mean, you can own like an acre now and you can vote. So that's still a good thing. And so here's kind of the weird thing. When everyone comes in, the room, they come into, it's actually called the mountain, right? And it was kind of shaped like this. Right? When you enter, like here's the front door. Come in. And there's seats all around here. Usually my classroom is set up this way. 
because I love the mountain. Right? Um, but with COVID, you know, we can't do it that way. But normally that's the way my room is set up. So normally, I would say, like, Strickler would sit there, right? And more likely, if someone could sit right next to you, who would have sat right next to you, Strickler? Yeah. Ava, okay? Um, Ava would have come in and sat right next to you, right? If, um, Sila, you could sit right next to someone, who would you have sat next to? Prior to Lane, okay? Um, so what happens is the exact same thing happens. Everyone came in, you know, Strickler sits down first, so then Ava comes in, and Ava's like, oh, hey, there's Strickler, so she sits there, right? Well, then Loudon comes in, and Sala comes in, and Lane comes in, and Lane, like, well, I don't want to sit by Strickler and Ava, because they just blah, blah, blah the whole time. So Lane's like, I'm sitting over here, right? Sala comes in, like, oh, there's Lane, I'm gonna go sit by Lane. Tessa comes in, she's like, no, no. So Tessa's like, I'm sitting here, right? That is me. That is you, Tessa. No, it's you, Tessa. All right? So just kind of by luck, because they're all new to this, right? New to the classroom, people just sit like that. Well, Strickler, do you think Ava and you are kind of similar? Okay. Lane, do you think you and Sila are kind of similar? <laughs> He's like, it's Sila, I don't want to say. Oh, no. So, you know, I get that. I understand. So this is what happened in the mountain. And so the way it just kind of worked is this. If you were conservative thinking politically, you tended to sit on the right. If you were kind of liberal thinking, you tended to sit on the left. And you're a moderate like Tesla, like whatever, you sat in the middle. This is why today when we talk politics, here in the United States, most of Europe, if you say that someone is conservative, you're, you say that they're a, a, like what wing? Right-wing right conservative, you're a left-wing liberal, right? Yeah. Okay. All the whole reason that there's a, a right and a left attached to being a conservative or a liberal goes all the way back to the French Revolution. So cool stuff, right? Big connections. Um, so fed up with this whole government thing, Louis the is like, I'm a king. I'm not supposed to be limited. So he tries to escape. Okay. It's called the Flight to Varennes because he gets caught in the city in Varennes, because he and his wife Marie Antoinette dress up as a butler and a maid, but most butlers and maids don't drive around like in gilded gold and silver carriages, right? It's like, um, I don't know, if Jeff Bezos, you know, was like, I need to escape, I, people are coming after me, and you, he drives away like, I don't know, in a you know, Tesla truck. It's like, okay, but he goes as like a, I don't know, a garbage man. Most garbage men don't drive Tesla trucks, right? So, kind of the same idea. He gets caught. Um, he gets arrested for treason against France. And he's sent to the Tuileries, which is now a section of the Louvre. Right? What is the Louvre? You should know what the Louvre is. The Louvre is probably the most famous art museum in the world. Okay, like if you're into art, you go to the Louvre. It's really cool. It's... it's the entrance is a huge glass pyramid uh, in Paris. It's really, really cool. Um, if the king is getting arrested, all their nobles, dukes, barons, are like, dude, maybe France is not a good spot for us right now. So a lot of people start emigrating, so they're known as the emigres, and these French nobles are booking out of France as fast as they can. Because they don't like the way things are going, the way things are shaking out. And then to make it even worse, though, in France, um, in 1792, Austria, Prussia, and the Kingdom of Sardinia declare war on France. Okay? Now, Marie Antoinette is Austrian, so a lot of people think that she asked her countrymen to come in and attack. That makes the everyday French person really mad at the nobles and the clergy, so they start massacring the junk out of them, okay? killing them in droves. Okay? And because of this, because this is not a killing people like this is kind of radical, Right? The whole kind of government shifts to a more radical phase called the National Convention. Okay? So it's kind of like um, there was a king, the king gets overthrown, and the first new government is kind of Republican. They're a little conservative, not to the king level, but they're a little bit more liberal. But then they're like, oh, we haven't done enough changes. So it's like they go from being Republican to Democrat. So the National Convention is kind of Democrat. Okay? We'll talk a little bit that they go way to the left. They go like super liberal, right? Um, yeah, so they do this, do this. Um, 
I see something else there. But um, foreign troops get defeated at the Battle of Valmai. France starts actually doing a little bit better um, in the war effort when they switch to the National Convention being in charge. Right. So there's a new National Convention. They're going to make things a little bit more liberal, right? They're going more to the left of the mountain. They're going to go, started out kind of here, now we're kind of going to go into here, more towards the middle, this range. Um, they're led by the bourgeoisie, right? The upper middle class, basically. Um, they call for universal male suffrage in this new government. What's universal male suffrage? I don't know what that means, too. What is universal male suffrage? That all men in the universe suffer? No. It means everyone gets to vote. Universal male suffrage means all men can vote. Okay? Universal male suffrage, all men can vote. Which is new in France. That's never been the thing, right? All men vote. Okay? They also make things easier, right? Standardize all their weights and measurements into something called the, what is it? Metric system. Stupid French. Yes, the metric system. Good job, Loudon. Okay. And then they put on trial Louis XVI for treason. They find him guilty, even though they had no real evidence, to be honest. Um, and in January 1793, they chop off his head. And to chop off his head, they're using a new machine, relatively new machine, called the guillotine. All right? Before that, um, remember when we watched the King of England get his cho head chopped off, what they use? In the little video clip. An axe, right? The problem, though, with an axe is it's heavy, right? Because it's got a... Through. And it looks like, you know, cut Marchand's head, then Strickler's, and Trams, Tessa's. By the time I get to Loudon, the blade is now maybe a little dull. I'm a little tired because I've been chopping heads all day. So I go to hit Loudon's head, and I'm like, oh, oh, shoot, Loudon didn't go all the way through. Sorry, let me try that again. Sounds like, oh, no big deal. I'm just bleeding out my neck, you know. So you've got that. Um, or I'm tired and I miss. I hit his shoulder blades instead. You know, it became a thing. So one uh, doctor, actually, said, you know what, we need a better way to kill people. A doctor says this, which is funny. Um, and he's the one who invented the, the guillotine, right? His name was Dr. what? Guillotine. guillotine, exactly, yep. So Dr. Guillotine invented the guillotine to kill people better, right? Which is kind of weird. Um, the Parisian middle class. So basically these are the, the workers of Paris, which become the mob, like they run the show in Paris. They are known as the San. It's an S. That's an N. San Culat. The San Culat. Okay, I'll have it up there in a second. The San Culat in French means without pants. So these are basic workers running throughout Paris with no pants on. Okay, running around, okay. running around without pants. Right, except. Um, by pants, we, again, we've got some different definitions. Okay? The middle class are called the sans culottes, without pants. This right here are what they consider pants. Okay? That's what we're talking about. Okay? See how this guy's wearing like pants that go to his knee and he's got big white socks? Okay? That's what fancy people wore. That's what the nobles wore. Those were called pants. If you're a worker, you would wear trousers that went all the way to your ankle, right? So by saying that they are the sans culotte, they're without pants, it means they're long pants, not these frilly short pants. Does that make sense? Why would the nobles wear this, but workers wouldn't? Why would the nobility wear this kind of stuff and the workers wore stuff like all the way to the ground? Check out those white socks. If you're working for a living, what do you think is going to have these nice white socks? They get really dirty, right? They're not going to be white anymore. So basically they're saying, we work for a living. We're not all fancy schmancy, right, like that. So um, the term citizen comes into play. No longer are you called by your um, noble title. You're not duke or duchess. You're not even monsieur and madame. Those are gone. Now everyone is citizen strickler. 
and actually it'd be citizen S trickler. And citizen trim, right? It'd be things like that. Um, simple styles, they, the women got rid of these big hoop skirts, right? So you can actually get through the door. Okay, guys, stop wearing makeup and wigs, right? So a political party forms when they start seeing how important these sign culottes are, like how they could be um, a voter group, right? We know that's how politicians work. So this political group are called the Jacobins, okay? And they become a political party, right, that is very far to the left, okay? It's kind of like how we have Democrats, but then we have very liberal Democrats and the kind of moderate Democrats. So I think Biden is a moderate Democrat. Um, Bernie Sanders, right, he would be a very liberal Democrat. The Jacobins are very liberal Democrats, is a way to look at it, right? Well, the leaders of the political party are these three guys. Robespierre, Marat, and Danton. Which I don't know why they're off their lines like that. It's way weird. Um, yeah, it's weird. So Robespierre, Marat, and Danton are the three leaders of the Jacobin party. Um, they're important, they'll come up down the line. Okay, so Robespierre, Marat, and Danton. Got him, Tessa? Um, now, not everyone obviously went with the Jacobins. Some were like, no, you guys are pretty great. We can't go that far left. So the ones who stayed more in the middle, to the right, they were known as the Girondist party. So you have the Jacobins versus the Girondists. Like, we have Republican versus Democrat, right? Well, much like the United States, in our Congress, right, we have committees all over the place. Remember back to civics class, like all sorts of committees. Well, in this case, the Committee of Public Safety became the most powerful committee in the government because they controlled the war effort. Right? They start drafting more people in the army to make sure we win more, and they control spies, because that's a big thing. And so lots of information comes to the Committee of Public Safety. Right? And the Jacobins use the fact that they control the committee, they have more people in it, basically, to run things the way they want to. Right? And so... Basically, by like 1793, France is in just turmoil, okay? There's foreigners invading. No one wants to get drafted. They're losing battles. Food is running short, right? So basically, France is like, dude, it's, it's like 2020 in France. It's really bad, right? Um, and the Jacobins use all of this chaos to kill lots and lots of Girondists, okay? They're political enemies. Basically what they would do, and you, they did this, the, um, the trials at this time were ridiculous, right? Like if I had beef with Tessa, I could just simply go to the police tomorrow and be like, you know, Tessa, I think she's a Girondi spy. I think she's working with the Austrians. Um, I saw her burn a flag of the new republic. Um, I saw her, I heard her say, long live the king. Boom, next day there's police at Tessa's house. They arrest her. That day they take her to trial. They're like, we find you guilty. Tessa's like, wait, I haven't got a chance to talk. Yeah, but you look guilty. And she's off to the guillotine the next day, head chopped off. So boom, boom, boom. So if you had beef with your neighbor, um, you know, someone called your name on social media, <coughs> you can easily get their head chopped off. So in particular, they went after Girondis, they went after the nobles, they went after the clergy, lots of people dying, 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 right? There's literally hundreds a day being executed in Paris because of this, right? The three guys in the head of the Jacobin party, though, right? Robespierre. Oh, don't do that again. Magic wand, go away. Um, Robespierre and Marat and Denton. And they, they were still leading the way, right? So, one of these guys had um, a thing. Um, basically what happens um, is Marat, okay? He liked to work from home, okay? Um, in particular, he liked to work in his bathtub because he wouldn't do work in the bathtub, right? So he'd have papers, candles, all around. He'd sit all night long working, doing papers, throwing them in his bathtub while he gets soaked in the tub, right? So one night, he's soaked in the tub, and this lady shows up at his door, 
Her name is Charlotte Corday, right? Knocks on the door, right? Butler opens it, says, can I help you? Yes, my name is Charlotte Corday. I've been sent um, to help Marat with his work. And they're like, oh, okay, yeah, he's upstairs in the bathtub. She's like, perfect. So Charlotte Corday goes up to the bathtub. She opens the door, and Marat's like, who are you? She says, oh, Charlotte Corday, I was sent by your good buddy, Danton, to help you with your work. And he's like, oh, okay, he starts chucking papers off, right? But while he's chucking papers out of her dress, she takes a big old dagger and goes at him in the bathtub and goes like all psycho, goes ee, 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 and stabs him like 72 times. Okay, just wrecks Marat. As it turns out, Charlotte Corday had a brother who was a Girondist that Marat had ordered guillotined. So she was going for revenge, right? So Marat, psh, he gets killed. He's out of the picture. Charlotte Corday gets arrested and she gets guillotined. Psh, psh. She's definitely out of the picture. So now there's just Robespierre and Danton leading the Committee of Public Safety. With Marat kind of gone, Robespierre really starts taking off. Okay? And he ushers in a time in the French Revolution from July 93 to July 94, known as the Reign of Terror. Dun, 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 dun. This is what your reading will be on, okay? the Reign of Terror. Okay? Basically what happens is this. The Committee of Public Safety literally takes over the whole government. And who's the leader of the committee? Robespierre. So Robespierre literally almost becomes dictator of France. Okay? Um, and he's very left-wing. He's very liberal. He's very um, anti-king. Um, Robespierre was the one that was behind the beheading of the king because he hated the king and queen of France. Just, just despised them. Right? There's a legend that when Robespierre was just a little dude, he won an essay writing contest. And the winner of the essay writing contest, the king and queen would come hear you speak, right? So you're like, oh, that's so cool. So the day comes, and it would be like if, if Brendan's out there, and he's got his little essay, and he invites all of his class to come with him. He's like, come on, guys, the king and queen are going to come see us. And they're like, oh, cool. And they get out there, and he's got his essay, and he's all excited. He's like, ooh, and your mom's there about to take pictures, right? And then it starts raining. And Trim's like, dude, I don't want to stay out in the rain. You know, we'll go do my hair. Come on, let's, let's go. Brendan's like, no, the king and queen are coming. Stay out here. So everyone's like, fine. So everyone stays out there in the rain. Next thing you know, here comes the king and queen in their carriage, right? But the queen is all like, uh, And she's like, I'm not getting out in the rain. She's like, just drive on. So Brennan runs out there with his essay, and phew, they drive by a big mud puddle, splashes all over side of his essay. Okay? Um, kind of like the essay he's writing about, um, you know, the long walk home right now. And so what happens is everyone laughs, of course, at Tyler, right? Because he's not doing what he's supposed to. And as a result, Robespierre has this huge hatred for the king and queen. So he's all about killing the king. And then he's like, you know what? Let's just kill Marie Antoinette too. So he also gets her all psh, guillotined. Um, but he's not all bad, right? Robespierre, because he's all about liberty, fraternity, right? He abolishes slavery in France. So before slavery was abolished in the United States, France actually does it first. So he abolishes slavery, so slavery is bad. But then he also guillotines like 17,000 people during the reign of terror. Not the best guy. Um, he's all about science. He wants to take Notre Dame Cathedral, big Notre Dame in Paris, and turn it into a church of learning. He's like, church is out. It's not a good idea. Science and reason are all that matter. Um, Danton, his good buddy, Finally, is like around um, June of 1794. It's like, dude, we are killing so many people. Um, everyone's afraid of us. And Robespierre's good. I want them afraid. He's like, no, this is ridiculous. Dude, we're killing people like on a whim. We need to slow our roll. And Robespierre, like, oh, you know, Danton, you're right. You've always been the voice of reason, Danton. Love you, buddy. No worries. Next day, Danton wakes up. Oh, there's a knock at his door. It's the popo. He's like, what are you guys doing here? They're like, Robespierre sent us, you're under arrest for treason against France. Danton's like, what? No, I'm, I'm one of the leaders of the Committee of Public Safety. They like, nope, Robespierre has ordered your arrest. He's like, oh, crummy Robespierre. So Danton goes on trial. He's found guilty of treason against France. And he's taken to the guillotine. And Robespierre is there. And he's like, oh, how dare you, Robespierre. Just mark my words. You will die by your own hand. Robespierre says, yeah, whatever. Kill him. Boom. So best friends. And he chops his head off. Right? So when that happens, everyone really sees Robespierre for who he is. 
And he's like, okay, we got to get rid of them. So even the popo are like, we got to take them out. So in July 1794, Robespierre is at home working, doo -doo -doo -doo, and he hears a, he's like, oh, it's the popo. You're not taking me alive. And so he runs into his office and grabs a gun, right? The popo break through the door and they want to arrest him. He's like, no, and he grabs his gun out of his desk drawer, cocks it. And he's like, ha, oh, you're not taking me alive, copper, and shoots himself, right? But just as he shot himself, the lead police officer threw like a, a baton, you know, hits him. And instead of going like this when he shoots, he goes like this and shoots. Because he, he shoots off his whole lower jaw instead of his head. Right? And so he's like, uh, and they arrest him. And they kind of tape his jaw shut. And they're like, you have the right to remain silent. He's like, uh, uh, uh. and then they're like, they keep him alive. They put him on trial. Like, how do you plead? He's like, uh, uh, uh. like, what? Uh, uh, uh. Like, okay, you're guilty. He's like, no. Oh. He's like, oh, that hurts too much. He's like, you know what? Just kill me. And so they chop his head off. So Robespierre does end up dying by the guillotine, just like Danton predicted. And the reign of terror ends when he is killed and guillotined. So, kind of like our own government, like a lot of times, right, when we go super Republican and a lot of things, the next election, four years later, we tend to go more Democrat. And everyone's like, okay, we're done with Democrat, let's go back to Republican. You know, so we're, we're always going back and forth. And that's what France does, right? There's our boys, there's Robespierre, Marat, and Denton, right? Guillotine, psh, murder in his tub, psh. Guillotine, psh. revolution, violent times, right? So after the reign of terror, right, the directory takes over. It's more conservative. It's not quite as cray cray as what the reign of terror was. They're like, we need to be a little more conservative. So we write a new constitution. It's like France is like fourth constitution already. And now we're like, only property owners are allowed to vote, not just anyone, because everyone is kind of like, eh, a little fishy. We're going to make sure you own property before you can vote, which puts the wealthy middle class back in control, not just the rabble that was the sans right? Um, and it's called, and the directory government is going to be led by five guys called the directors. Okay? So you start with a king, then you go to like universal male suffrage, everyone can vote, huge, huge government, everyone has a voice. So now you're shrinking a little bit and going to a five-man directory who kind of runs the government. Okay, so a little bit more conservative. The problem is the directory is kind of in the middle right now, right? They're not super liberal. They're not super conservative. They're trying to be in the middle. So because they're in the middle, they face challenges from both sides. The royalists who are like, let's bring back a king and go super, super conservative. And some people in France are like, no, let's bring back the saint culottes the radicals and be super liberal, right? So because the directory was in the middle, right, they were like, oh, we're getting hit from both sides, what do we do? They needed to defend themselves with les army, right? Which is why the army, watch this head get chopped off, really sorry, will lead to the rise of this cat, Napoleon Bonaparte, which we will talk about on Monday. <laughs>